When I was a college senior, I had no clue what I wanted to do with my life. I just knew two things. I loved people and I wanted to be great, whatever that means. One day at a career fair, I stumbled on the opportunity to be an SDR or sales development representative at Oracle and my tech sales journey began. Looking back nine years later, having worked at Oracle, Google Cloud, and a late stage startup that's now charting towards IPO, and having created a YouTube channel and podcast that I love as a byproduct, I can say with confidence that I wouldn't have wanted to embark down any other early career path. As Kyle Van Voris, a guest on my channel said in one of our podcast conversations, make sure to check that one out. Tech sales is a career that has a low barrier to entry with a huge financial upside where you can make as much or more than doctors without having to cut anyone open. Beyond having the potential to eventually make deep six figures and even seven figures in enterprise sales, you'll cultivate rich relationships, a powerful network, transferable communication, and entrepreneurial skills, and you'll push yourself to become the most badass, influential, and impactful person you can be. In this video, we're gonna dig into a step-by-step -step roadmap, highlighting some of the most important areas that you can focus on to position yourself to break into tech sales in a competitive job market and ultimately alter the trajectory of your career and your life. Make sure to like this video, share it with others who can benefit from the message, and feel free to book coaching with me if you're serious about accelerating your journey into tech sales. And subscribe to my newsletter so that you can get a discount on my course that's coming out in March called Tech Sales Accelerator. My course is gonna tell you everything you need to know about landing an SDR role at a company you love, setting you up to get promoted to account executive quickly, and accelerating your path to six figures. All right, let's dig into it. As a starting point, as the cornerstone of your tech sales journey, you're gonna to wanna to cultivate your desire and vision and continually reinforce it. Take time to clarify your personal vision for your life, both short and long-term. Think one year, five year, 10 years down the road and how tech sales empowers that vision. The more specific and personal and the more vivid, the better. There needs to be an emotional connection to the work you're going to do to break into tech sales and the work you'll be doing once you're in the SDR role, especially if you want to last. There is no right or wrong answer to your why, but it needs to be strong and motivate you personally. Take the time to reflect and get very specific, not just about why you wanna be in tech sales, but why you want to be in the city that you'll end up working in, why you specifically wanna be at the companies you're applying to. And this implies, by the way, that you're only thoughtfully applying to companies you actually will want to work at that set you up for long-term success. Communicating your passion and intentionality is one of your secret weapons to blow your interviewers away and stand out from your competitors. It can actually be the deciding factor in whether you get the role over someone else or lose it to the competition. Hiring managers wanna see the twinkle in your eyes and that you can get excited about the opportunity. And having a specific vision of where you see yourself longer term, whether it's a VP of sales at a large enterprise company or a founder of a SaaS company, will demonstrate competence to your interviewers and that you mean business. As an action step, write down your vision for your life, one year, five year, and 10 year vision, looking far into the future. Write down why tech sales, along with your why for specific companies you choose that you want to apply to, and read those things every day. Take it a step further by visualizing yourself consistently across different senses as if you are in the role at your dream company, setting meetings, hitting your bonus, seeing it hit your bank account, and enjoying time with your teammates. Next, after writing down your why and clarifying your vision, you're going to want to build your foundational tech sales methodology and develop a tech sales learning habit. You want to develop a B2B sales methodology that you can use as your framework for approaching all aspects of sales, from outbounding like cold calling, cold emailing, and social selling to closing that you can count on to produce reliable results. A methodology will help you early in your career, and over time you'll be able to build on that methodology and develop your own unique style. To that end, get a couple top B2B solution selling books under your belt like you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar which is written by David Sandler. It's the Sandler sales methodology, which is rooted in transactional analysis. And it's what shaped the sales methodology that you typically find at Oracle. And it had a huge impact on me early on in my career. Spin selling is also a great one to check out that shaped many top sellers that I've come across in my day, including some enterprise sellers that I spoke with at Google Cloud. I asked them what book really shaped your sales methodology and strategy, and they said spin selling was the one. Also check out New Sales Simplified and Fanatical Prospecting, which are great for hunting sales roles like the SDR role. 
In addition to reading top B2B solution selling books to build a baseline methodology, you'll want to flood your LinkedIn feed with insight from top thought leaders. Follow top LinkedIn thought leaders like Kyle Coleman. If you haven't already, check out the interview I did with him. Some people said that the first 20 minutes was worth $12,000. He's an expert on all things SDRing. Check out Josh Braun. He's a cold calling and objection handling guru. Check out Chris Orlobe. He grew Gong from $200,000 in annual recurring revenue to $200 million in annual recurring revenue. And he runs Presence Club or P Club IO, which is one of the biggest online tech sales learning platforms out there. He is a beast. Check out Jason Bay, who runs Outbound Squad and will teach you everything you need to know about outbounding and tech sales. Check out Kyle Van Voris, who's an expert on business development and has advised over 60 B2B SaaS companies to grow their top line revenue. Check out Marcus Chan, who's an expert on helping tech sellers break through to the $500,000 plus mark. And if you really want to see what's possible in tech sales and you want to know what it takes to close mega deals in the enterprise sales space, if you want to know what it takes to make seven figures a year in SaaS selling, check out Brandon Fluharty, Jamal Raymer, and Ian Cognac. Also follow organizations like HubSpot and Harvard Business Review on LinkedIn for great sales and industry-specific business insights that'll make you a better, more well-rounded seller. And make sure to check out some of the top tech sales podcasts like 30 Minutes to President's Club, Sales Gravy, and my podcast where I've interviewed every person that I mentioned previously who are thought leaders that you should follow on LinkedIn. And if you've got a more technical itch and you want to get into cloud infrastructure sales like I have, make sure to get your AWS Cloud Practitioner certification. This will teach you the fundamentals of cloud computing. And the cloud platform world overall is a very lucrative one if you're willing to take on a more technical sale. Along with building your foundational tech sales methodology and a tech sales learning habit, you're going to want to build your cold call flow and get real world cold calling experience. Cold calling is a huge part of SDRing, and a phone-centric approach tends to drive the best results in the role. Hiring managers are gonna wanna see that you've got the guts to hop on the phones, and they're gonna wanna see what you've got on the phones in action in the infamous mock cold call exercise. The mock cold call interview is where the hiring manager pretends to be a prospect, and you are an SDR trying to set a meeting with them, and you run through a simulation of what an actual cold call might be like. In order to be ready to crush this exercise, you're going to want to develop your own cold calling approach and practice, practice, practice in advance. There are many ways to slice and dice your phraseology for cold calls, but rather than worrying about being a scripted robot, develop a flow that feels authentic to you. The flow might look something like this. You start with an opener. Hey Tim, this is Chris calling from Oracle. I realize I'm interrupting your day, so before I go any further, do you have 20 seconds for me to tell you why I'm calling? That's just one example of a permission-based opener. Once the prospect agrees to let you share why you're calling, you're gonna wanna pique their interest by leading with a big expensive problem relevant to their world. Thanks, Tim, I appreciate the time and I'll be brief. When I talk to other VPs of engineering like yourself, they're often finding that they're spending 10 to 20% more on their monthly cloud costs than they'd like to be. How are you currently managing your cloud costs today? That's just one of many examples where you can lead with a relevant problem and pique a prospect's interest to talk more and open up for a dialogue. Notice the open-ended question to get the prospect talking, and it turns out based on the data that cold calls that last longer have higher conversion rates. From there, you're gonna wanna ask more questions to understand the prospect's current state, their problems, and ask things like, can you tell me more about that? How long has that been a problem? What is that costing you? You're also gonna wanna be ready for objections like I'm not interested, we're all set, and I'm busy. You're literally interrupting someone's day on a cold call and you'll almost always run into objections and resistance. Fundamentally, when you face an objection like I'm not interested, you want to diffuse pressure by saying something like, that's okay, that's not a problem. Or you could say something like a mirror, not interested? With a slight uptone beckoning them to share more information and ultimately this will get them talking. What you're not doing is trying to resist and push back on the objection. You're simply acknowledging it and getting the prospect to share a little bit more information so that you can have an actual discussion and get to the source of the objection. When they say not interested, you could say, 
That's okay. That's not a problem. You know, I know your job's not to help a salesperson, but when I hear not interested, it typically means one, it's not a current priority right now, two, you have another vendor, or you simply just want to politely get me off the phone. Am I onto something with any of those, or is it a different reason? There's no perfect script for handling objections. They can get messy, but at the end of the day, this is an example of an approach and a framework that reduces pressure and opens up a conversation to learn more. And finally, you'll want to have an approach to closing on next steps at the end of the cold call. You could say something like, based on what I'm hearing, XYZ seems to be a challenge and a priority to solve. How about we do this? I'd love to set up time with your account executive who talks to a lot of other customers like yourself dealing with similar challenges, and he can share what we're seeing in the market and areas where we can help. And from there, we can see if it makes sense to pin down next steps. Are you free next Wednesday at 2 p.m.? Ultimately, there's no silver bullet in sales, and that's just one example of how you could close a cold call. But from there, you're going to want to pull up calendars and book the meeting on the call. You're going to want to show hiring managers in the mock cold call role play that you have a nose for the close and that you push for the next steps and seal the deal on the call. For more inspiration on shaping your own cold calling approach, check out interviews I did with Josh Braun, Jason Bay, Kyle Van Voris, Trent Dressel, and others. And also subscribe to my newsletter to get a copy of my own cold call script, which you'll get in exchange for simply signing up. All that said, sales is a performance art, and the best way to accelerate your learning is to get out there in the arena and actually make cold calls and learn through doing. When you were a kid, you didn't read about riding a bicycle. You hopped on and you rode. Something I didn't have available to me when I was trying to break into tech sales nine years ago, but is available now, is that you can sign up with a platform that I partner with called Glen Coco, which is essentially like Uber for cold calling, to get training from real world tech companies and start making cold calls on their behalf. When you set qualified meetings for the tech companies you're calling for, you get paid 300 per qualified meeting. Some callers make two to 3,000 or more a month and they're not working that many hours a week. With real world cold calls and cash under your belt with Glen Coco, you'll be able to add that to your resume and use their platform to collect and share your actual call statistics and easily address the most common hiring manager objection, you lack cold calling experience and back it up with real world data that you can cold call and you do have what it takes. If you want to learn more about Glen Coco, check out the interview I did with the founder. And if you decide to move forward, use my affiliate link in the description of this video. A key part of your journey in a tech sales is building a rockstar resume. It's obvious that your resume is a foundational asset that you'll need to put together to submit as a part of your applications. And here are some high level tips on how to make a resume that resonates for tech sales. I also made a video that goes into more detail on making a great resume, which you can check out here. First, pick out a beautiful template that's visually appealing on Etsy that catches hiring managers' attention. Just Google Etsy and then search resume templates and find one you like. These templates are a simple adjustment that that will visually transform your resume and get hiring managers to want to read more. Next, you'll want to tell a compelling story at the top of your resume that shows hiring managers what relevant qualities and skills that are relevant to the SDR role and succeeding in that role that you bring to the table that will be an asset to them and their team. You'll also want to tie in why you want to work in tech sales for the long run, and you'll want to take it a step further and tailor this story at the top of your resume on a company by company basis showing that you'll bring to the table specific qualities that are in the job description that align to what they're looking for, showing that you value what they value, and showing why specifically you want to work at that company, whether it's based on their culture, their training and development program, or the people that you'll be working with that you actually spoke to in networking conversations. The more specific you get and the more tailored to the company you're applying to, the better. When it comes to describing your work experience, remember that sales is an outcomes business, so you're gonna to wanna to speak the language of business outcomes when you talk about your experience. What this means is when you describe your experience, you're gonna to wanna to highlight quantities. Made 100 calls per day, for example. Highlight the dollarized impact you made in your role. For example, increased revenue by X and decreased operational expenses by Y. You'll want to highlight your percentage attainment versus goals set in the role, for example, achieved 150% of target, and highlight your stack ranking versus your peers if you are a top performer. Maybe you're in the top 5% of top performers, you're the number one performer or the number three performer. 
companies like Google really want to see how you compare and stack rank to your peers. And ultimately, sales is a competitive space. And at many companies, whether it's Microsoft or others, you'll find you're stacked ranked against your peers. Also, be very specific in highlighting how you achieved the outcomes you produced, highlighting qualities and skill sets that are relevant to success in the SDR role. And bringing this all together, a hypothetical sentence on your resume could look like this. Through a personalized cold email approach and consistent cold call and LinkedIn follow-ups, I drove $1 million in pipeline versus a $750,000 target, achieving 133% of my quota, and I ended up being in the top 10% of high performers in the West Coast organization. One thing you don't want to underestimate is the importance of throwing in your special sauce in your resume, essentially what hobbies, interests, causes, and skills make you you. Hiring managers don't want to hire sales robots, and they want to work with people they like, who are interesting, and have passions that extend beyond making cold calls. In my case, I highlight that I speak fluent Spanish, I volunteer with best buddies, and I taught myself bodyweight calisthenics. These hobbies, these skills, these passions are a great conversation starter with hiring managers, and they're actually a way to differentiate yourself from the competition. And to wrap up on building a great resume, once again, make sure to tailor your resume, including the story at the top and your work experience to the job description and what you learn about from the people you network with in terms of the values, the qualities and the skill sets that this company looks for. Another key aspect of breaking into tech sales is becoming a LinkedIn legend. I made a video going in more depth on how to optimize your LinkedIn profile for tech sales. Feel free to check that out, but these high level tips should also be helpful. One of the most important aspects of optimizing your LinkedIn profile is catching people's attention visually with a strong profile photo and a banner photo that shows your personality. Remember to have a pro take a headshot of you if possible, have an open teeth smile, which instills confidence in others and shows credibility and makes you more trustworthy. Make sure your background is simple. Make sure you're not too far away from the photo, but you're up close and your face takes up most of it and dress business casual. When it comes to your background photo, if you love nature, put a picture of the Grand Canyon, or if you love your city, Austin, Texas, like I do, maybe put a picture of the skyline. And also put a headline that's anything other than aspiring SDR. You might put something like passionate people connector and business development professional. And translate your story from your resume to your bio on LinkedIn, and feel free to add some more spice on who you are, what you bring to the table, and how you think about sales, and even throw in your passions. One thing you can do to cultivate respect and attract opportunities on the LinkedIn platform is to share valuable content over time, whether it's your own, about your journey and what you're learning, or resharing other thought leaders' content that is helpful to you and helpful to others. As a starting point, make sure to add everyone in your network as connections and build connections over time and nurture those relationships. And that might be as simple as commenting on someone's post and celebrating it and sharing it so it gets more views. And of course, use LinkedIn to set up networking conversations with SDRs, account executives, recruiters, and hiring managers at your target companies. This will help you create warm inroads, which can be a game changer when it comes to breaking in with no experience. Another key milestone in your journey breaking into tech sales with intention is to define the criteria of what you're looking for in a company and to pick great target companies where you'll be happy because you're in a great culture and set up for success over the long run. Please don't rush to get a job at any company just to check a box. Take the time to think through what you really want. What culture do you want to be a part of? Do you want to be at a large enterprise company where you get a lot of training and support and brand recognition or a startup where you're in the wild west getting your hands dirty with less training and support, but a big upside and a chance to move up the ranks quickly? If enterprise is your move, then look at the category kings recognized by top analysts like Gartner, especially in key areas like cloud, like AWS, Google Cloud and Azure, data analytics like Snowflake, Databricks, and others, cybersecurity like CrowdStrike, ERP like SAP and NetSuite, CRM like Salesforce and HubSpot, and other niche industry leaders like Epic, who's one of the leading core softwares in healthcare. Also check out this top 20 list of the largest SDR orgs in the United States.
Another great resource is to look at RepView, which is great data on company culture, pay, who's hitting their numbers at different companies. So please check that out. You'll find some awesome companies by using that website and that tool. Make sure to look at topstartups.io if you have the startup itch and are an entrepreneur in the making. And leverage people in your natural network who are at tech companies that they are happy with to create warm inroads and get referred in and increase your chances of getting the role. And that's a great segue to one of the most important steps in your journey in a tech sales. You need to become a networking ninja. Networking is arguably the most impactful thing you can do to increase your chances of breaking into tech sales, especially with no experience. You're gonna wanna network with people at any company you're trying to get into to get referred and coached from the inside. You wanna make it an inside job. Cold applying to companies should be a last resort, and if you're cold applying when you could be networking and getting a warm referral from the inside, you're doing yourself a disservice. So start proactively building relationships with SDRs and account executives, recruiters, and hiring managers at target companies. And in the process, use prospecting skills to show them you have what it takes to succeed in the SDR role. Approach your outbound and conversations from a place of not only being curious to learn from them about what it takes to succeed, but to also understand how you can contribute to the person you're networking with. For example, getting them paid via a referral bonus if they refer you and you get the job. When reaching out and in conversations, always throw in a personal touch based on your research on the person you're networking with. Share why you're excited about the opportunity, the more specific, the better, and that you're impressed with their success and looking to learn from them to position yourself to land a job and get to where they are at. Use your networking conversations to learn about what it takes to succeed, of course, what the culture is actually like, what they're looking for in an SDR candidate and in a teammate, what the interview process is like and any pitfalls to avoid and how to succeed and flat out ask the person you're networking with what they would do if they were you to better position yourself to break in. These conversations will help you proactively understand what you need to do to build your experience and prepare to shine in the interview process, especially in a competitive job market. Of course, if you're ready to begin the application process and there is an open role, ask for a referral and reference the actual job rec so it's easy for them to refer you to the right role and share your intention to help get them paid and make it a win-win. Go a step further and ask for feedback on your resume before submitting. And if the person you're networking with really likes you, they may be willing to help you prep and coach you through the interview process itself. And if they offer that kind of support, in addition to trying to uncover questions that you might be asked in advance, try and get insight into the personality style of the hiring manager and the others who will be interviewing you to understand what they're like, what makes them tick, and how you can resonate with them in conversations. Now, if there are no current openings at the company, still nurture those relationships with periodic touch points, including updates, well wishes, congratulations, things like that, so you stay top of mind for future opportunities. You wanna play the long game. And the biggest step when breaking into tech sales when you really need to bring your A game and shine is interviewing. And interviews and tech sales in this competitive market can be like a horse race. You could do everything right and have the hiring committee like you and still lose out to someone who did just a little bit better. For that reason, you're gonna wanna do everything you can to prepare to be an incredible interviewer who wows your interviewers and blows them away and stands out from the competition. When I was at Oracle, I had a hiring manager tell me, Chris, that was the greatest interview I ever had. And when I was in my final round interviewing for a role at Google Cloud, Bryce Buffalo in my Googliness interview flat out blurted out and admitted, I hope you get it. Here are some high level principles that have worked for me to keep in mind if you wanna get your interviewers reacting like they did. From a mindset perspective, you wanna be the most interesting candidate out there. And you only can do that by creating an amazing experience for your interviewer and shifting off yourself and focusing on them. Here are some of the ingredients that make for an unforgettable interview experience for your interviewer. First, make sure you bring a personal touch to show you did your homework on the individual to create a rosy context of relatedness from the start. Wow your interviewer with passion and intentionality by having a truly compelling and specific answer to why you want to work at the company you're applying to. Clearly speak to your unique background and strengths and why you're a good fit for the role and for the company and back up your strengths with an arsenal of vivid stories that provide real world proof points that you're the real deal. 
Show them you know what you're getting into in the SDR role and that you can already pitch the product on the spot or do a cold call role play on the spot if asked to do so. Make sure to be crisp and succinct with your answers to behavioral and role related questions in order to instill confidence while also giving the interviewer the space to do their job and ask all the questions they need to ask to evaluate you. The interviewer can't do their job and ask all the questions they need to when you ramble and ramble and ramble. Now, in order to be crisp with your answers, you'll want to practice for interviewers at least a month or so in advance so that by the time you get to the interviews themselves and you get asked, tell me about your background. Tell me about a time you received a piece of constructive feedback and implemented it. Or tell me about a time you set a stretch goal and achieved it. It feels automatic. This is what I did when I got my job at Google. I networked with three or four people at the company in advance, got all the interview questions that I was probably gonna get asked, and I practiced for over a month before actually starting the application process. You better believe that by the time I was in the interviews, I was feeling crisp and I was feeling competent. For a list of 30 of the most common behavioral questions and role-related questions that will prepare you for almost any variation of questions you might be asked when interviewing for the SDR role, check out this video here that I did. I put a lot into it. I've had people reach out saying that that video alone helped them get a job that they loved in tech sales. It really gave them confidence that they could handle any type of question that came their way. After watching the video I made on 30 common interview questions you'll get for the SDR role, also use Glassdoor to find questions that are specific to certain companies that you're applying to and get coaching from the inside from someone you networked with to get an idea of the actual questions that they were asked and the personality style and values of the people who will be interviewing you. Making it an inside job like that through networking is really going to give you a leg up over the competition. Another critical aspect of wowing your interviewers and showing your competence is asking great questions to show your curiosity in the interviewer themselves about their personal background and their path to success and the organization. And finally, you want to close on next steps. You could say, I really enjoyed this experience and I'm excited to move forward. What are the logical next steps? That's one of many ways to close the deal in your interview, but you always want to be closing. And if you're not closing on interviews, looking for next steps, regardless of what interview round you're at, that's a red flag to the hiring managers. You're interviewing for a sales role, so you always need to be closing. All of these fundamental aspects of interviewing put together will make it easy for your interviewer to say yes to you and bring you on board to join the team. And if you end up finding yourself getting stuck in your interviews and running into the same roadblocks, then don't be afraid to get coaching from someone with real world experience to get you over the edge. You can feel free to book time with me. I had a coaching client who was very bright and he kept getting to the final round with top companies, but something was missing. We worked together, we took his interviewing to another level and got him over the edge and he got a job at Snowflake, which is one of the top data companies in the world. And the final leg of your journey into tech sales is negotiating your best offer. Congratulations, you made it through the interviews and now it's time to get the highest starting pay possible. Now, the best way to have leverage when negotiating for your first SDR role is to try to get a few offers at a time and then use that to your advantage to ask for higher pay. But not everyone's fortunate enough to be in that position and it definitely does take a lot of finesse. I'll be honest, when I got my first job at Oracle out of college, I was just happy to have a job. But basic things like when they present you with a pay range and you say you see yourself at the higher end of the range could make a difference in getting a 10K higher starting salary than your peers. I've seen people out in the market who did this type of thing and it really worked. Of course, you'll have to have wowed them in the interview process and have them really want you to come on board to have leverage when saying something like this. Now, when you get to this negotiation stage, if this video helps you get there in any way, book some free time with me and I have your back and I'll help you go the distance. That would make me so happy if this video helped you succeed and get to that point. I hope you guys got value out of this video and if you did, like the video and share this video with other people who could benefit from the message. You now have a step-by-step -step roadmap to break into tech sales and set yourself up to take advantage of this amazing career path. Now on your journey, keep things in perspective. The best things in life take time and starting a career is no small feat. Set realistic expectations and keep going when the going gets tough. This is a meaningful opportunity worth pursuing and you've got people like me in your corner to cheer you on. Guys, if you need coaching to get past certain sticking points in your journey, book time with me. 
and I'm happy to coach you along the journey. And subscribe to my newsletter to get a discount on my Tech Sales Accelerator course, which is gonna help you land your first SDR role in tech sales, get promoted to AE, and set yourself up to launch down the path to six figures as quickly as possible. I'm pouring my heart and soul into this course, and I can't wait to bring it to market. You guys rock. Thanks for tuning in to this video, to your success in tech sales and in life. Happy selling and happy living. And I'll see you in the next one.